All right, everybody. Uh, hopefully the wind isn't too much. Uh, what I'm going to do today, I, I made these um, uh, container buckets. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, if I showed them to you or not. Um, I'm going to give you a little close-up of it here in just a minute. Um, but what we're going to be doing is um, actually planting this time. Uh, in these, you need to use potting mix, not potting soil, not topsoil, but potting mix. Uh, because of the loaminess and the way it wicks moisture and all that sort of stuff, so it's important. Um, and we're going to put one tomato in it, and uh, I think I'm also going to put one basil in it and one uh, Greek oregano uh, right next to each other, and I think they'll grow fine. I've heard basil and tomato do really well. I'm sure the oregano won't have a problem. Um, and then we almost have like a little Italian garden going. <laughs> Add a little fresh mozzarella cheese, and man, you've got a great little appetizer. Um, so I'll show you more of this in just a few minutes. Okay, this is the close-up. What I did was take a uh, two of the Home Depot buckets, right? And the first one is where most of the work is done. And as you can see, drilled a whole bunch of holes. I think you can see that through the bottom. And then took a hole saw, uh, two and a half inch, but really a three inch would be better, but... Um, I didn't have one. So I drilled that and I took a uh, one of these blue party cups and I cut a bunch of slits into it. And that is going to be what's called the wicking cup. It wicks the moisture up from the bottom reservoir, which is the first bucket. Um, and you get uh, constant watering and the roots will actually grow through that into the water. And so you keep from getting uh, you know too much moisture around your tomatoes or whatever you decide to plant. And yet they can still get plenty of water, uh, so you don't get root rot and all that stuff. And what you do is you water it. Can you see that? You water it through the PVC pipe, right? It goes down through the bottom. You can see the bottom there. And then it goes into this second bucket, um, like so, right? They just fit right together. And then inside of the second bucket, at the right where the, you might be able to see it's through the shadow there. There's I drilled um, holes on both sides of the bucket right below the inside bucket and that's your overflow um, so if it's only going to hold so much water so you'll never over soak your plants it'll always wash out the only thing that i've been told is to make sure that you make sure that those plugs those aren't plugged up uh, occasionally just so they will drain and so that's what we're going to do next we're going to fill them up and start doing some planting all right so what i've done here I filled it all the way up um, to where it pretty much domes the bucket and then I put a, about a two inch wide strip of fertilizer around the edges there. It's probably close to two cups. Um, and then uh, what I'm going to do now is take some uh, clear plastic and put over the top. Now if you live up north they recommend dark you know, like black plastic. I'm down here in Florida they recommend white plastic. I can't find it so clear is going to have to work. Um, I'm sure it's about heat you know, how much heat it's going to conduct or reflect. So, um, <clears throat> clear is the next best thing, I guess. And, um, again, I'm using just straight potting mix, um, not miracle Grow because miracle Grow, uh, uh, except for maybe the organic, already has fertilizer in it. You don't want to use that, you'll over-fertilize. And then just a granular 666 um, uh, fertilizer. It cannot be osmocoated. It has to be like the salty, you know, minerally. Uh, uh, fertilizer uh, and then what we're going to do we'll put the plastic on it then we'll cut an X you know we'll cut an X right in the center there we're going to put our tomato plant in the middle and right next to it probably on either side like that um, we're going to put a, a basil and an oregano and um, and that's it and then you just make sure you just keep enough water in the reservoir there and uh, you should have continuously watered plants without them being soaked and I imagine the way that the fertilizer ring up here works is probably from the condensation in the plastic, right, with the plastic top on it. It's going to condensate water there, and then I have the feeling it's going to, you know, it'll start to melt down some of that fertilizer, and it'll slowly seep into the soil. And that's how you get a constant fertilized um, um, growing container. Uh, I'm not really positive on how that works, but that's what everybody says to do, so I've done it. And it's the only way that actually makes sense because there is no water coming from the top. So you're not going to water this in at all, so it has to be condensation. So anyway, um, I guess the next step is plastic. Okay. 
regular lid, Home Depot lid, has the gasket in it. Doesn't really matter, uh, not for this one anyway. And we aren't storing food here. We're growing food. Um, but what we're going to do is take a utility knife and we're going to cut right along the edges. Can you see that? Right along the edges around here and cut the centerpiece out. And what we're going to do is put the plastic over the top uh, of that container and we're going to use the rim to snap it down and it'll hold our plastic on. Now you can also do this with just plastic and a bungee cord or some string or whatever, just something that'll hold it down. But I figured I'd already bought lids for all these things and what the hell, I don't need extra lids. So I'm going to try it with lids. Um, I also think it'll hold the plastic a lot better. Okay. Well, I'm not so sure I can get all those plants in one little bucket, but I did it. Um, I got, uh, got a basil plant sitting here. A better bush tomato, so it shouldn't get as tall, but it should get uh, some nice fruit on it. Hopefully you guys can see that pretty good. And then over here, I put some uh, Greek oregano in there. And uh, so now we're just going to put some water down in there and see how she grows. I'm sure the tomato will do fine. I'm not sure about the other two. Um, there, I don't know that there's enough space in a bucket for all that, but we are certainly going to try because I can't think of anything better. I have the feeling the oregano will hang off the side, the, this will come up and the basil will go out that side and and it's just gonna be delicious. I can't hardly wait to eat them. Yummy. So, and then one thing I found with this, the lid, it might be actually better to do a bungee cord around the plastic because water's gonna pool in here and that's not good. Uh, also, you have to cut close to the edge of the lid and I actually broke it um, while I was putting the lid on. So I'm going to end up taking bungee cord instead of the, the lid top, or the lid, you know, the ring of the rim of the lid, and doing it that way because, uh, like I said, if you bungee cord it or string tie it on there uh, with it mounted in the middle, it'll just, water will just run off. So when it rains, you won't get soaked. It won't just hold water. And in Florida, that means mosquitoes or whatever. So um, anyway, that's the a distinction that I've made there. So anyway, that, that's one, and I've got one, two, three more to go. And then I also made a container out of a Rubbermaid, 18-gallon uh, Rubbermaid, uh, you know, the uh, totes, um, that I tried to grow some sweet potatoes in, but it got too cold one night and froze them off, and so they're dead. Um, but I'm going to reuse it and uh, put some um, Brussels sprouts in it and some... Uh, head lettuce and uh, should be able to get six plants in there and instead of going around the edges with the fertilizer um, it'll be a strip down the middle um, which I'll show you uh, but anyway um, I'll show you some more when I get some more done here uh, so far I'm pretty happy with this but like I said I'm gonna have to change the lid okay so I got rid of the lid and I used um, zip strips right zip ties on the edges of the bucket to hold the plastic down. You should be able to see that there. And um, you can see I've got this one already planted. I showed you that already. And I've got this one. You see how the uh, white in the middle? That's all condensation already. So like I said, the condensation with that fertilizer I think is correct. And I got another one there and another one there. And a big old mess to clean up. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm getting ready to plant these guys. I'm going to put uh, four more tomato plants in, some basil and some oregano, and uh, we'll see how well it works. And then, like I said, I'm going to do a Rubbermaid one, and, uh, but I just wanted to show that to you with the zip strips. Like I said, you can use bungee cord, which would probably be even better, but you can get this really tight. Um, all I had were smaller zip strips, so I had to use seven of them on each bucket. Um, I'd recommend if you're going to do zip strips, go get some bigger ones. Um, you know, you can always tie them together, but uh, anyway, so that's what I've got so far. Okay, alright, I got my Tupperware one done, and I'm going to do the same thing with this one. That lid's going to go. I'm just going to use uh, probably a bungee cord or something. I didn't have long enough, so I just used the lid, but see what's happening here is it will catch water along here, and you really don't want that. I mean, it'll evaporate out, but it's a lot easier when they're done like this, and the water will just roll off the top, right? So there's my, I have two... Uh, bell peppers, green bell peppers, and one red bell pepper right in the middle. Right in the middle there. Um, I'm going to try three in one of these because it has enough uh, 
um, soil underneath it and um, and fertilizer and that it should be able to grow three in that small area I know in a garden you're supposed to be 18 inches apart but we're gonna see what the hell this does <laughs> it may just be too close together for picking the fruit but everything I've seen online um, they've got them stacked right on top of each other and then we've got the uh, this is uh, the uh, better bush the better boy bush um, with uh, basil and oregano this is aroma basil and oregano another aroma basil and oregano and a beef steak with nothing else because I have the feeling as big as they get they're gonna need that whole bucket so uh, one thing else that I keep forgetting to do I'm gonna remind everybody else though see the hole at the top of that pipe mosquitoes right so we, I need to get some uh, uh, caps and cap these off or at least put screen over them uh, so that the mosquitoes can't get in there and lay eggs and breed mosquitoes and drive me totally insane. So anyway, that was my job today. Um, I should have tomatoes in the next, uh, well, they say 75 days, but according to the people who do this in pots, I'm thinking about half that time uh, because they're saying it grows twice as fast and twice as big. and So we're going to put it to the test. So anyway, that's my bucket garden so far. Um, I still have a few more things to plant. Um, I've got uh, another tomato plant. It's a uh, an heirloom variety. Uh, I've got a jalapeno. I've got um, four Brussels sprouts and four uh, head lettuce. And right now they're just kind of sitting in the shade and I'll keep them watered and I'll get them in some soil in the next day or two. But uh, anyway, uh, I can't wait to tell you how good they are. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it, especially with the price of veggies lately. So this is the beginnings of my SHTF uh, container garden. And the nice thing is, until they get too damn big, well, hell, they're portable. So uh, you can take them with you. Uh, even if they do get really big, if you can figure out a way to get them on a trailer or something and uh, be careful with them, you can take them with you. Hey, everybody. I just wanted to add a quick note to this. Um, uh, one of the reasons that I'm doing the container garden, several reasons, actually, uh, pests. Um, you know, in the ground, there's a lot of things that attack the roots. Everything from moles to mole crickets here in Florida, uh, chinch bugs, uh, grubs, um, and probably several other things. Uh, and it just keeps that problem down. And then also in Florida, we don't have real rich soil, at least not where I'm at. It's mostly sand. And so, again, it's kind of hard to raise some plants. You can. You just have to make sure you fertilize the crap out of them. And uh, it would be a good idea to mix in some... Uh, uh, some topsoil and stuff and get some organics in there uh, so it just makes growing a little harder um, especially like tomatoes and things like that so that is one of the that is the reasons the biggest reasons that I'm doing this container garden uh, aside from the fact that you know what I've already alluded to but uh, it's a good reason to do a container garden especially if you have you know problem areas like I am like I'm in uh, with your soil and pests and whatever um, I'm going to be using a uh, an organic uh, pesticide and fungicide on these um, when needed and we'll see how well that works um, I have no idea but I imagine it'll work pretty good so uh, anyway that is it and that is the dog you saw a little bit ago that's Jake he is my old man he is a greyhound something mix <laughs> where nobody's ever really been sure and he's 16 believe it or not he was 16 in December and he's a big dog, you know. Um, so I'm pretty blessed just to have him. He had a stroke like three years ago, and uh, he's just amazing. He's a trooper. And then the other one, well, she has disappeared back there in the bushes somewhere. Uh, Daisy, she's my chocolate lab. I was going to show you her. But anyway, that's my Jake. He's a good boy. He used to be fast, fast, fast. Now he's waddle, waddle, waddle. <laughs> Can't hardly walk, but he's happy. Wags his tail and eats. <laughs>